everyone! Today I'm going to be taking you through the process of painting a pet portrait with me. So I've done a lot of these pet portraits before, mostly dogs. This is actually the second cat portrait that I've ever done, which I'm really excited about because I am a cat person. Usually when a person commissions a pet portrait from me, they want it to look super realistic. I've only had a few instances where the customer wanted a more abstract look. So what I usually do first is make a really accurate pencil drawing. And this is the hardest part because it does have to look pretty perfect. I did that part off camera because it makes me too nervous to film myself drawing. But once I do have that under drawing, I start to lay in the base washes, which are really light to begin with. And this cat actually has dark stripes and patches that you'll see in a little bit, but it's better to work up to those dark values when you're using watercolor instead of trying to make it dark right away. So I always begin with color blocking the light values first. By the way, the watercolor set that I'm using is the Windsor and Newton Cotman set. They're pretty good. It's their student brand, so the colors aren't as saturated as they could be but they do mix together really well and they come in a really nice wide range of colors. And I'm starting to run out of some pans, um, mostly the greens and blues like you can see in this video. And as I'm refilling them, I'm buying the professional Windsor & Newton watercolors to squeeze in the empty pans. Those are a lot better. They're more saturated, so you don't have to use as many layers to make them really bright. Um, but you know, these are okay for what they are. So once I have the base layers done, I'll start to go in with some darker colors. And I try to keep my brush strokes really loose so that it gives that soft and fuzzy fur texture. Of course, it's not going to be the exact placement of this cat's stripes and patterns, but it'll be close enough and it gives a good effect. So I don't worry too much about making sure that like every stripe is in the right place. These brushes that I'm using are probably my favorite art tool that I own, period. They are Rhapsody watercolor brushes and I've had them probably for about seven years and they're still amazing. They keep their shape really well and the points are still super sharp. They're sable brushes and so they just soak in and hold a ton of color. That way I don't have to refill my brush as much. So if you are in the market for some watercolor brushes, I definitely recommend them. They're kind of expensive, but I think it's worth it. And I mean, they've lasted like forever. So now that the darker parts are dry, I'm going in with medium values to add dimension with shadows. And there's Harlow. <laughs> she likes to jump on my back while I'm painting and usually it scares me and I drop my brush and the paint on the brush on the floor, but she just gets jealous when I paint other animals. She has to let them know who's boss, so who can blame her? I'm adding a warmer brown wash over some of the cat's fur because the picture is a little brighter than how my painting was looking. I really love watercolors because it's pretty easy to fix mistakes like that. Instead of having to paint over the entire thing, I can just add a wash on top and it completely changes the color. And this cat has a lot of white fur as well. So the best art tip that I always keep in mind when I'm using watercolor especially is to limit the amount of black paint that you use. Especially when you have shadows on a light color, they're usually blue or purplish. So I know that it looks really weird at first, especially on the cat's face. That part was really scary to paint. But once you commit and do it a lot on different areas of the painting, it really has this light and airy quality to it that people are looking for in watercolor paintings. So by using blue or purple for the shadows, it ends up looking really bright and beautiful. If you use gray or black for shadows, it can turn out very lifeless and dull. So I always keep that in mind when I am painting with watercolors. Hi 
better now. I'll paint you someday. Don't be jealous. And this is white gouache. It's basically like an opaque watercolor. If I were using actual watercolor for these whiskers, they would be very see-through. And so gouache is really nice for adding details. I'm using it for the whiskers and to add texture to the edges of the fur. And to be honest, I really don't know why I'm using gouache at this point in the painting process. It's really dumb to paint the whiskers before I do the background because I'll just end up having to paint the whiskers again later. So, who knows what I'm doing. Um, I think I was watching Catfish at this point while I was painting this, so I probably got really distracted. And so don't follow this part of the video. Learn from my mistakes. Don't do this. So in the reference photo, the cat is laying on a blue and white paisley bed sheet. And since the sheet is mostly white, I just went straight for the shadows. I know at the beginning of the video, I said to do the light colors first, but I mean, the light color is white. So I'm just using that purplish bluish color for the shadows. Um, and then I am using my favorite light blue color for the paisley pattern. I love this color. It's the color that I ran out of first. So since watercolor is translucent, the patterns over the shadows are a little bit darker than the ones on the white folds. So it makes it look a little bit more realistic um, without having to really change all that much. It's just layers on top of each other. And yeah, here I am repainting the whiskers. So there you go. And here we are, the final piece. I love it. And I especially love the shadows. I think they turned out really well. And honestly, I just love painting cats in general. So if you have a cat that you want me to paint, let me know. And if you have a dog, I will paint that too, but I'd be more excited to paint a cat, just being honest. So, okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something at least. And if you didn't, I'm sorry. Maybe you'll learn something in the next video. So I will see you all next time. Bye. Thank you.